accessible for a child with deaf blindness and multiple disabilities. Um, our first slide, and this is really what I intend, um, you know, you will get from this session um, to evaluate what current resources you have, feel a bit more confident in your ability to implement changes for the health and well-being of those in your care. Um, more, most importantly, perhaps gain ideas and inspiration uh, to create activities that engage children um, or young adults feel supported in the family or uh, workers' efforts to create an environment that promotes physical activity and feel empowered to select suitable recreational opportunities for the child or children. So that's hopefully what the session will encompass. Um, general recommendations. We like to kind of say, you know, have the can-do attitude, and I know it's cliche, but we can, particularly during COVID times, look at everything negative and say, well, we can't go there. We cannot do that. That place is closed. But let's look at now as the weather is getting nicer, kind of what can we do? What's at our disposal? Um, general health recommendations, of course. You know, if you have a young person or um, a child that you, you know that they uh do not do well on hot days you know think about things like that do we need to hydrate more on the days that it is exceptionally warm should we minimize the time we have spent outside should we stay maybe in an air-conditioned area if at all possible and of course as many of our children students and people we work with um, thrive on routine i'm also conscious of not being routinized to the point that spontaneity or fun goes out the window or to the point that you become so stuck in a routine that it's become banal and, and somewhat a little bit boring. Um, identify and build from likes, which, which kind of seems as a no brainer, but oftentimes if you have a, a, a young person who really likes to sort things or, um, you know, likes the feeling of being held close or tight kind of that sensory input how can you then transform that into an activity that they will enjoy to do that's physical and gives them health benefits but that also might include family members or siblings which is the next point so including siblings or family members in a group activity setting aside the dreaded saturday morning you know family activity or um, workout time as a group um, you know, look, if it becomes part of the routine and that you're all invested in it, you are more likely to thrive if that's the case. And something my coworker and I always um, pride ourselves on is selecting exercises or activities based on things that your child or the individual can do. OK, so I'm talking if you work with someone who's quadriplegic and can only um, like move their head an inch to the left or the right well, then that's what they can do. How can you modify the environment and the activity so that they can be successful from doing that movement? Are they using a head switch? Are, is that head switch then gonna, you know, um, activate something that with their uh, voice output or we have a ball launcher here that actually catapults um, lightweight balls um, or could you put a beach ball close to their head that they're bopping into um, and could you know someone else use a pool noodle from a distance and, and pass it back and forth to them um, and most importantly like give yourself a break um, particularly those of you here that are parents or workers and caregivers who have been working non-stop um, pulling extra shifts pulling taking over from nursing staff um, when it wasn't particularly safe to do so um, especially over this past year so my coworker and I, we plan something and, um, you know, for our students and it probably starts to work around the third class. The first class is usually, oh, my God, you want me to do what? I have a meltdown. I don't like this. Things are different. There's too much going on. The second class is a little bit more. You can see them coming around a little bit more receptive. And then the third class is like, OK, I got it. I understand what you want me to do. I might not love it, but I'm, I'm going to do it. So, you know, persevere. And if it doesn't work the first time, don't be afraid to reassess and say, OK, that was awful, but I'm not turned off trying. I think that's the most important piece. 
So um, in order to shape how I think we can get the most success from this session, um, I want to give a little bit of a background um, for my profession, of course. And although I don't know each one of your individual um, situations with regard to um, syndromes, disabilities, um, presentations, um, every student that has an IEP is entitled to legally the same amount of physical education um, by should be an adapted physical education teacher. Um, oftentimes districts are not able to provide that. I don't know why. I'm in a very privileged position. We have five adapted PE teachers here on staff at Perkins. Usually it's funding or they don't have the need for it or there's not an APE teacher um, in the locality or available. And the first two um, blurbs there. Uh, one is from the APENS, the Adapted Physical Education National Standards. Um, adapted phys Physical Education is physical education which has been adapted or modified so that it is appropriate for the person with a disability as it is for um, the person without a disability. So it's as appropriate for that person as the other. Um, and then our second is our um, professional branch of which we are all members of. Um, the goal of physical education is to develop physically literate individuals who have knowledge, skills and confidence to enjoy a lifetime of healthful physical activity. These opportunities for students in their APE classes should not be scorekeepers, timekeepers, um, sitting on the sidelines and cheering. Um, they should be meaningful. Um, they should be really valued. They should feel like they are a part of that class. And without them, a part of that class would not function. Um, they can form friendships during these classes, learn important skills, such as movement skills, gain an understanding of rules. Um, and of course, the, the ever important winning and losing would just be an example of that. And as I said, um, students with an IEP are legally entitled to that. Um, that's that's no question about it it's part of the individuals with disabilities education act um so if you know we can chat a little bit more about that i know a lot of questions often come up um so i'm happy to, to address some of those questions after if you have them all right um so i thought we could look at you know physical activities um what our goal is what we could do in the backyard, what we could do at home, and then maybe we could take a look at community and a little bit wider, which is typically what we do here at Perkins. Um, I work with um, a coworker who's, who's worked here for 20 years. Um, he's a, a gifted, uh, very talented uh, man, Matt Lockertelia is his name. Um, we often go by the preface, it's in our school curriculum, uh, which is not different to, um, you know, your typical educational settings with regard to physical education, your preschool to kindergarten age groups, you're going to focus on play skills, turn taking, fundamental movement skills, socialization and explorative play. So that could be maybe you bring um, a tea into the mix, you put a ball on top or a beach ball or something and you knock it off with your hand. Then the next step would potentially be adding in the sports equipment once you've built up the skills to grip a bat or a lightweight a racket of some sort and move on to that around the middle school age where you get an intro to sports, rules and associated regulations like having a referee, um, concepts of winning and losing, like I said, which can be really tricky um, and sportsmanship. And then high school and beyond, you're going to look at refining your sports skills. If there's a sport that maybe you want to pursue um, on your own time, whether that be through Special Olympics or Paralympic um, avenues, focus on exercise and lifelong fitness skills, um, and then start moving out to the community um, and learn how to advocate for them, how to access them. And this is often where you'd tap into those ECC skills, those expanded core curriculum skills, so your orientation and mobility. How am I going to get to the local YMCA? Um, your OT skills, how am I going to dress myself or pack my bag? Um, just again, just forward thinking and organizational skills, like how am I going to um, plan my day? Um, moving on from here. Um, so the next slide has uh, four pictures on it. Um, and just for a second, just take a moment. So as you all sit here at this session on a beautiful Wednesday when you could be, you know, outside having a nice coffee or something, um, like what are you, what's the goal? What, what's, what's your goal in your own individual situation? 
that made you join today? Um, I have four visuals here. There's a, a gymnast in the bottom left. Um, that will be probably skill acquisition or skill refinement. Okay. In the middle, we have what looks like a father who looks like he's at his wit's end, um, about to pull his hair out with two sons who look like they're enjoying themselves, whatever they're putting their dad through. Um, bottom right, we have a young girl um, who has had her face painted and looks like she's just having a lot of fun. Um, and then top right, we have four young um, uh, children who are, they look like they're either um, hopping on one foot or um, marching in space. These are all stock photographs, but I just thought to ask ourselves, what's the goal? Is it for skill acquisition that you want to, you know, come up with some ideas? Do you want your son, daughter, child or um, friend to get better, get their skills refined? Um, do you just enjoy being driven bonkers <laughs> um, by it? <laughs> um do you just want to have see your children have fun um, which i think should be embedded into every single um, thing that we do in our lives um, and then of course there should be an element of um, the importance of physical activity again if you um, go back to the case of a, of a young person who might be quadriplegic who cannot move and doesn't have the ability to move independently get their heart rate up um, jog on the spot for example like these children are doing that could take the form of using a stander, using a gait trainer if they use one. Um, again, using that mobility or, or that um, motor control that they do have or being manipulated through movements, um, those passive range of motion um, by a caregiver or um, a loved one because movement is, is medicine, literally. Um, you can cut down on osteoporosis or um, bone development, etc. We need to move, we need to strengthen and um, it's just as important no matter uh, what our ability level is. So moving on, uh, physical activity, I think it's important to just kind of define the two. Um, the CDC recommends that um, young people, if they regard it under 16, get 60 minutes of um, exercise or physical activity per day, okay? So I think it's important to break down the two categories. Uh, activity, physical activity is any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that results in energy expenditure, okay? Um, exercise um, is a type of physical activity that involves planned, structured and repetitive uh, bodily movements done to maintain or improve one or more components of physical fitness. Um, there's seven components of physical fitness. You have flexibility. Um, you know, that could be something that if you're helping someone to stretch, someone who might be in a wheelchair, etc., that is still an, a component of um, physical fitness. And so I think it's important to scale them back and think, OK, physical activity. Think of yard work, think of walking the dog, think of um, up and down the stairs. You know, you don't typically do that as a planned, structured, repetitive amount of times. Um, whereas exercise, you're probably think of like an ab crunch, you know, a sit up or something like that. You are doing a repetitive motion in order to strengthen a specific group of muscles. I just think it's important to separate the two. Um, and, and again, think of your own situation. Think of your own case where 60 minutes, that's probably pretty much attainable, um, one would think, um, in the day-to-day -day, um, living of, of our lives. Okay, and here's the clincher. <laughs> um, I'm conscious of time, so I am moving at, a, at a, quite a, a quick pace. Um, but again, like I said, any questions, just feel free to throw them in the chat and we can acknowledge them afterwards or, or keep them till the end. Um, so backyard ideas, um, not knowing each of your situations, um, what your student, child, friend, peer, whoever it is, um, presents, um, how they present or how what they like, what they dislike. It's, it's really difficult to say, this is the recipe that would work for you. But I think some certain guidelines will hopefully just spark off that light bulb in the mind kind of moment for you. Uh, we have a photograph here. There is my coworker in COVID times with his double mask. Uh, working with a wonderful young man um, and you'll see just to uh, my co-workers foot there there's a um, kind of an odd looking thing, like a traffic cone why would a traffic cone be um, in our play area where we have adopted um, our PE classes this year um, so that is one idea that we have that we use consistently here during our classes uh, which it would be um, simple modifications okay and they can make all the difference we we purchased um, I think we have 10 brightly colored uh, traffic cones 
Um, we put our names on them right away. So our facilities guys don't take them, um, but they're perfect. We use them for um, doing our, our practicing our ready, set, go. We got to run from one cone to the next cone. We can put rings on them. We can take balls off them. We can use them as tees. Um, we can use them as bases in kickball, baseball, tee ball. We've used them for um, uh, dribbling around during soccer. Um, for someone with low vision um, or um, you know, even a visual impairment to reach for at hip height and find, you know, an anchor to stand by or something. It's just, it's, it's really a no brainer to me um, in the profession. Now, if you were to pull this out in the backyard, someone might say, oh, are you having construction done? You just nonchalant say, oh no, this is what Tommy uses, or this is what Mohammed uses, or this is what Shira uses as a day-to-day -day thing. Other children will gravitate right toward that because there's a reason that traffic cones are colored and shaped the way they are, they catch our attention and that's what we want. Um, so just to backtrack a little bit, um, the main thing I would say is, is using consistent equipment and it does not have to be expensive. It does not have to be purchased from a specialized vendor um, and do not be afraid to make it yourself. Um, I'll show you some pictures in the following slides of our most used and least expensive equipment. Um, including siblings. I know this is a big one. Um, I do have a family member, um, did have a family member with a significant disability and I know exactly how um, it can impact um, family relationships, sibling relationships, etc. It can be really challenging. I think incorporating as best you can um, siblings um, if they're willing to in the creation and completion of activities um, and you know it's easier to do in the winter time but uh, we have um, some students who are still remote and we will post activities that um, are sometimes for their siblings as well and one was a really successful one was making um, bowling pins out of um, simple uh, water bottles um, similar to you know ones you get from uh, sparkling water or a polar seltzer um, the siblings had uh, chosen the colors and had helped put like um, beans in there um, that the um, young individual could use and they actually played together afterwards. Both got the sense of completion, belonging um, and fulfillment from what they had created um, together. Simple modifications, as I said, so using the, the brightly colored traffic cones, um, who cares, they're, they're still running around them, they might not be touching them with their foot because you, that would hurt. Um, but it's, it's a new challenge, you know, for, for siblings, it can be, well, can you turn and pivot faster? Um, you've got to get, get around that cone instead of just running right over it. Um, another really successful, um, their school bell, excuse me, really successful um, activity that we do here at school, more so pre-COVID, um, our relay games and activities. So if you remember at the very start, I said, you know, if your child really likes sorting or um, understands the concept of a finish box or a finish bucket, um, why not? modify a game like capture the flag where you know you you tip out some ball pit balls and and it becomes a 20 minute activity where one is taking and one is taking from the other they're they're constantly exchanging or moving um you know these small little ball pit balls they're getting the physical activity maybe you say okay you got one minute fast 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 um maybe someone you get a helper in for each team you add more people um so again it's just adding that fun but also working off of their likes or their strengths and things that they can already do. And the final point on this slide, um, think about the pacing of an activity. So for example, I, I like to use a tether ball, which is, you know, that um, um, pole that um, many of us had in our back garden growing up with the ball um, attached with a, a, either a bungee string or a cord. Um, and you would whip that thing and it would just go around round and round and round. Um, it was actually quite a hazard. Um, so the pace of that activity was very fast. Um, many would shy away from it. And if you had a disability or no vision or no vision, that's not something you would probably be running um, towards to play. Why not modify that and use a beach ball? Um, you know, suspend it with same the bungee cord, maybe from a tree or from um, if you have a, a clothesline in your, your garden or um, uh, something that you could suspend it from um, and, and all of a sudden you know you're, you could use pool noodles again you have that um, modification that isn't 
all that strange. I mean, lots of people use pool noodles and particularly in COVID times to sit, stay six feet away from one another. Um, but moving that back and forth um, and having having new challenges and who can get it, um, you know, can we pass it 10 times in a row? Maybe your individual or your student um, uses hand under hand assistance to reach up one arm at a time, which is a workout for them, which is challenging for them, but that they can still be part of that same activity. And of course, you know, simple things like um, having a parachute. And I know that is challenging even for some of our students here, many of whom just like to lay under the parachute and have you do the work. Um, but, you know, could siblings help um, to construct some kind of a tent or a camp or, a, um, you know, kind of fashion together some kind of um, some kind of structure that that if your student or individual likes to just lay underneath that, yeah, they could still do that. Um, maybe their sibling could um, help them out with that. OK, so we have some of our superstars here um, and as a reference before our cheapest and our most used equipment. Um, okay, so photograph on uh, my left under the title there is my coworker with a spectacular young man um, who has a brightly colored ball, which was purchased from CVS <laughs> for I believe $7.99. Um, and there's a similar colored ball on the opposite corner there. It's a football, it's got some nice bobbles on it, um, nice texture. It's a very hot commodity here at school. We had to buy multiple, um, many of them because of COVID times. Um, but that young man is also using um, a ramp, okay? And that ramp is made from corrugated cardboard, inexpensive. Uh, we were able to put a hinge, um, very basic hinge on the back so that there is a, a little bit of a plateau at the top there. Um, students have many different options with this. They can just tip the um, bottom or you could rest it on a wheelchair tray um, and you could have them rest their hands on top or underneath the ball and the slightest bit of movement is going to have that ball coming down there. Um, you could do that with PVC piping. You could do that with um, an Amazon box. Um, really, you could get creative and it's something that, um, depending on how much you will use it, could last you a very, very long time. Uh, we've reinforced ours a few times with um, floor tape, which has helped considerably. And we've used it for not just bowling, kickball. We've used it for invasion games where, you know, like don't get hit by the ball as you run around and, and collect, um, you know, bean bags. Or um, again, it depends on, on what the activity is and what the um, ability level or many of our students, I actually think every single person in our program uh, whatever their ability has used this at some uh, period of time. And the next set of four photographs um, are four uh, wonderful students that we have here at school. Um, and they're playing a disc golf or frisbee golf. Um, some of you might have seen these um, or be familiar with um, the sport as it is played um, on some college campuses. Um, it usually has a chain, um, chain target. We have a couple of those here. Um, it's, as you'll see from the photograph, not the most visually enticing activity. Um, this is from September um, when we first returned to school. Um, we were trying to think of socially distanced activities where people could travel around, have their own piece of equipment, still engage in the same activity, but at a distance, like I said. And the four individuals, you've got one young man in a wheelchair, uh, one young man who's learning to toss or throw the frisbee, a uh, young lady who's um, batting it with her elbow because that's how she prefers to do it as I hold it for her. And then the other, another young man who is um, holding it between his fingertips and kind of dangling it there. So we work on um, scoring for some students, for others it's more getting the physical activity, the, the, um, the movement involved, walking to the different targets. Um, others are able to work on scoring, um, following the map, um, bending, picking up, keeping, um, you know, can you get it through the target? Um, another activity that I'm sure many have come across is can jam. Um, can jam is an easy activity to actually um, to, to modify. Um, you just make the hole bigger. Um, you put some nice white tape around the outside um, of where that kind of letterbox slot is. And all of a sudden, you know, you use a larger, um, thicker frisbee, like an inflatable one, or you use a small ball, 
um, and you put it up at a height. So suddenly it's, it's gone from being low level, impossible to see, visually complex to suddenly, you know, it's, it's a game that, that I bet if you brought that out at a family barbecue, um, a lot of different people will come up with some modifications um, just for that familiar sport. So these are just ideas that we've done here um, in the DeafBlind program that have been really, really successful um, for us. All right, and continuing with our ideas and equipment, um, plenty of exercise can also be completed without any equipment. Um, this was probably going back to when the weather was, you know, not as favorable, um, or if you're like me and you don't love the heat, um, maybe you're still staying indoors. Um, so think about what you have on hand. So, um, you know, a, a pillow can be an excellent, um, um, you know, uh, object just to do some very, very light intensity um, physical activity or exercises with a stable chair, a broom, uh, if you want to do some kettlebell swings, laundry detergent, um, stairs, playing cards, um, or, you know, colorful scarves. You could combine, as I said, a craft activity or OT um, activity to create your own equipment, um, create your own Frisbee. Um, we have a picture of a weighted sock there um, that has been created, putting rice um, in a sock, which is securely fastened, um, which then becomes something really effective for gripping for those who don't have a great ability in their hands to grip, say, a dumbbell or a weight um, or lifting. If you want to lift, you know, um, one of those overhead a couple of times. Um, board games, you could easily modify a lot of board games. Um, Twister is one that I like to modify that's it's really easy to do. Um, you could put it on a picnic bench. If you had um, an individual in the wheelchair, reel the bench up to it and all of a sudden it becomes kind of like a cornhole. You have to toss the beanbag to a certain color. Um, you can have other modifications where you stick it to the wall. And um, again, if the person's in a wheelchair um, or has limited mobility, you still do, um, you know, your right foot on green, left hand on blue, etc. Um, allowing them, of course, to take their foot or their hand off each uh, each time. But again, they're getting distracting. It's it's just more that the motivation has changed. The motivation is now, oh, can you reach that? Come on, you can reach that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and we've used things like movement bingo um, cards in the past. Um, the center image there is um, a really nice activity that I, I hope that people are familiar with. Um, it's called Drums Alive. Um, there is a picture of some young children and some instructors in a field. Um, it would appear they have some maybe drumsticks or modified uh, lumini sticks with some colorful scarves tied to them. Um, it's an excellent workout and there are tons of videos on YouTube that you could research. Um, all you need is a Lowe's bucket or a Home Depot, one of those, every single house has one um, or a box or something um, and invest in, if you have a beach ball around or if you have, you know, a yoga ball, um, put it in there, you could bang it with your hands, you can bang it with your um, your head, you can bang it with your your knees, you can kick it on each side. Um, it's, it's a really, really good workout if you have a little bit of vision, a little bit of imagination and add some music in there and it's, it's just a really good time. Okay, and you know, again, as we referenced exercises, um, it doesn't have to cost um, cost a lot of money. There are a lot of basic exercises or movements that you can do um, that can be inclusive to anybody, no matter what their uh, level of ability. So I have a, just a very, very simple, basic example here, march in place, whether that's in a wheelchair with assistance, lifting from behind the knee very gently, um, a side step, so a lateral side step, stepping out, back together, out, together, out, together. Sit to stand is, is just what the label says, using a stable chair. Or if someone is in the wheelchair um, and they, they are able to wait there, maybe you work on 15 sit to stands with assistance. Arm raises is just like it says. Arm up goes straight by the ear and back down, again, with assistance or without. Head or shoulder touches. Again, you're just getting that good posture, sitting up straight and some mobility through the shoulders. Um, kicks or leg extensions. Arm reaches um, will be out past the um, in front of the chest as opposed to up past the ear above the head. 
and then opposite knee touch. Um, there's no reason that moms and dads and, and grandmas and aunts and uncles can't do these as well if it were a, a family motivated activity. Again, throw on some music and suddenly it's a, a celebration. Okay, so I just want to pivot to uh, community based activities for the final section. Um, again, respecting that everybody's circumstances are different, particularly with COVID. Um, and if you may or may not be uh, willing to or comfortable um, re entering into uh, community based activities at this time. So I do certainly respect that. Um, and I think it's important to just let's, like, let's, let's call a spade a spade here and list out everything that doesn't work for us sometimes. So COVID, cost, um, whether it's time and your money, transportation, which can be challenging. Do they have accessible bathrooms? Of course, behavioral considerations, weather, and I'll also like to include, um, you know, weather and um, allergy associated um, issues, which have been horrendous this past week. Um, accessibility issues, doorway stairs, etc. Do they have an elevator? Uh, business hours, places that are only open um, that you know don't suit your schedule. Uh, staffing issues. Um, if you you know typically see one person there who knows a specific routine that you do, and, and suddenly they've left. Um, and medical presentation and conditions that again just um, can be challenging when in the community. Okay, so in, in light of all those barriers, um, let's now look at what things are socially distanced, still available. Um, and these are often things that um, I research on a day to day basis. Um, COVID has changed things a little bit, but my coworker and I have a class that's called a park class, P A R C. We like to call it physically active recreation in the community, uh, where we take three students per semester out into the community. Um, and do a real trial for um, community based activities, simple as. Um, it's been a fascinating um, experience and I've really, really enjoyed it. And I'd like to bring you through some of the things that have really worked for us. Um, I'll just briefly click on some of these links. Um, I do apologize if you're not from Massachusetts. Um, I, I only have the information from this state, but I would hope um, sincerely that. The rest of the New England states have similar um, uh, DCR websites or um, um, you know resources for you to uh, to research. So each of these will bring you to a full list of accessible recreation. Um, again, what that is for you and your family or your individuals might be different, um, but we've got recreational programs and events, hiking, boating. Uh, camping, swimming, fishing, um, hunting, ice skating, skiing. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. We have the Universal Access Program, which is also an excellent resource. Um, so again, does what it says on the tin. It's universally uh, accessible. So we have done the Adaptive Biking Program. Um, has been fantastic here in um, on Soldiers Field Road. Um, we have done the accessible uh, hiking trails. We have done golf, as that man is pictured there, not in the same degree, to the same degree. Um, and then as the weather does get nicer, and I think Massachusetts is in a very, very small category of states that does have um, state-owned beach wheelchairs that are available um, to reserve. Uh, one thing to remember is uh, you do need to bring your own um, a flotation device they do not provide it provide any pft it has to be personal um personal to the person and um, so there's the example of, of of a beach wheelchair um and they have a full list of um them right here on the website accessible beaches and pools um i know smile mass is involved in that but um, an amazing amazing initiative um so if you think about it something like getting a wheelchair on the sand is is actually near impossible and so to be able to have opportunities um, to get your, your feet in the sand and your toes in the salty water, I think is, is really amazing. Um, as I referenced uh, driving range, it's not just for the, the rich. Um, we take students there all the time, no matter what their ability level. Um, we've had really, really great success. It cost us $7 for 50 balls. Um, and we milked it. We were there for hours, um, you know, practicing different skills. Um, it's a really nice activity to um, to try, to just try, whether it's um, 
with the whole family or whether it's just an afternoon on your own with with your child or your um, individual that you work with. Um, as I said, uh, the DCR again is, is, is a great resource that Massachusetts um, Department of Conservation and Recreation has a lot of parks around that are equipped with um, adaptive exercise equipment. So you might see, um, you know, a stretching area, you might see um, some um, arm operated ellipticals and, and such things. And um, disc golf or frisbee golf, um, they have, they're not readily available. They're more available, I believe, in central mass. Um, maybe there's a, a bigger need or desire or um, want for them out there, but um, closer to the city, there's not as many frisbee golf courses. But again, you saw what we fashioned with <laughs> a hula hoop and, um, and a, a, a PVC pipe. So I, I, I challenge you to, to create your own disc golf course, um, maybe in a, in a locality or in a, a common area of a, of a housing estate or something. And again, tap into your local community. Um, I know in my community, there's often <clears throat> um, specific sessions for um, children with autism, autism friendly sessions, or, um, you know, if you just made those links and said, look, would this be a suitable thing? Or could my son or daughter or friend come and try this? And, you know, if it doesn't work out, then we'll know for the future. But but just give it a go because you never know um, what the individual might get out of it. It might be literally life changing for them. And then obviously, if you wanted to, um, Go further afield or, or pay um, pay a little bit more for um, activities. Um, the All Out Adventures are a wonderful organization. Um, they're who we did our uh, the the adaptive biking with um, through the DCR um, last uh, sorry the fall of 2019. Um, so I believe they are based in Marlborough. I look over my shoulder. No, nope, Northampton. Sorry, Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, and they deal in a lot of, again, outdoor rec. Um, they have an amazing fleet of adapted equipment. Um, got some photographs here. They'll often do, um, you know, all weather. They, they get out there and, and, and really get to it. So they're a wonderful organization um, that um, I think, you know, hopefully people could um, tap into as well. And I believe um, we just have one more slide and then um, we'll open it up to questions right around the 15 minute mark. OK. Um, so um, tips for selecting a suitable community activity. Again, it's going to be going to be at your own um, discretion to choose what works for you and, and your schedule and, and your child or your individual. Um, this is uh, what we use. We are you know, professionals. It's our job to do it. My coworker came up with um, what we refer to as our activity guide. This will be more so for um, individuals who are nonverbal, um, who might have a more of a difficult time to gauge whether they really enjoyed an activity um, or to see like, OK, is it something that in their future I would recommend that with their group, group home, they go to this um, in the future. For example, I'll just show you the first page. Um, he came up with some really um, nice, vague um, kind of comments that we would assess the students on every week. Like, OK, um, uh, did, did, did they, for example, let me see, like a personal goal. So that's a good one to choose. Um, I'm thinking of one person who every time they hit the ball had a big smile on their face. And the harder they hit the ball, the bigger the smile, um, you know, when they missed and they hit the ball at the driving range um, on their backswing, they had a little bit of a harder time, a little bit of a behavior um, because they did not like missing the ball. They liked when it made that nice kind of sound and we all cheered. Um, so I would have said that their personal goal was to you know, hit the ball far or learn to um, have their, refine their swing a little bit. Um, the activity is designed for them to help reach their goals. Um, that can be loosely associated with you know, um, range of motion and mobility. Can they bend down to pick up the ball? Can they balance the ball on the tee? Could they potentially, you know, bend into their future? Could they keep um, keep keep those muscle groups moving in? And, and again, just kind of, is it something that they are able to do? Um, so that's just an example of, of what we use. Um, I do not absolutely expect parents. There is like six or 
four pages of this. Um, I do not expect parents to, to do something like this. Um, so that is where you would call on your APE teacher um, or someone in the district to say like, okay, well, what's in my community that you know of that you think Fred might like or Johnny might like or Grace might like. Um, and if they have that information, you know, I think that's where the team, team element comes in. Uh, parent and support groups and don't be afraid to say, look, I had an awful day today. I, I, I hated being there. Has anyone had an experience like that? Um, you'll, you'll probably get more honesty than, than you think um, from people. Um, and finally, just ask, you know, if you're really lost and you're going, okay, I'm so overwhelmed. I want to do something, but I don't know what it is. Just call the GCR. They're the nicest people. Um, it's such a wonderful, wonderful um, organization. And just pick up the phone and say, look, here's how my, 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 person is they have this this and this do you think anything on your website could you um point me in the direction of x y or z um they might say no and call them again and get somebody else to talk to um but i think there's always going to be something out there it just has to be changed or modified a little bit in order to um have your individual enjoy it to the the maximum um, ability that they can so here are our resources, and as Lily said, this will be um, shared, I believe, on the page. I'm also happy to um, share my contact details, um, um, you know, with, with the group here today, if there are any real further um, questions. I don't have answers, I definitely don't. Um, I just like to kind of hopefully give a few examples and then folks can start to talk and um, kind of get those wheels turning and say, okay, that would work for me. Um, I have two real quick resources um, to show to the camera and then we'll go maybe to, to, to questions after that. Um, so again, uh, with regard to probably going back to backyard games or activities, um, you don't need to do something new every single week. There is comfort in the familiar. That's how we see skill acquisition. That's how we see skill refinement. Um, my coworker and I, I'm the crafty one. He's the methodical one. Um, he comes up with all the assessment tools, etc. I like to craft. Um, I've created uh, these. This has been around for probably as long. I've been here seven years. This has been here seven years. It's a tactile dice. It's a, a former Sonos box from a speaker. Um, laminated pages with some tactile numbers, which are just pieces of foam that are, I think, gorilla glued on. And then there's um, some braille numbers on there as well. If you're doing a little exercise circuit at home, um this is a dice that can be thrown chucked kicked whatever you know land on the number that's how many exercises we're doing and that will be some you know for folks who might be somewhat difficult to motivate at times oh you got a four come on it's two four overhead one two three four etc etc um other examples of a dice again another sonos box which is the wrong shape um we have what I like to call is like our Bible of our picture supports. Um, you know, they're all printed out. We just keep them there. We can pull out them out at any stage that we need them. And then you can just stick them on your box. Oh, today we're going to march, touch our toes, pass the ball and stretch. Those are four options and before you even get the protest. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that boring. You roll the dice and you see what you get and all of a sudden you're doing it um so again it's 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 mediating it's it's like having that conversation with yourself saying i gotta do the exercise or i can't have my cookies with my tea or my glass of whatever you're gonna have um and then our last one again is just a lazy susie that's been stuck to um i don't even know what this is hard plastic um we stick pictures up there. It's just another choice board. And this could be as well, again, for maybe older individuals. Um, you know, okay, Simon, do you want to walk today? Do you want to ride your bike? Do you want to um, do exercise? Do you want to do yoga? Put your options on there. Um, and that you're giving them some ownership and some choices as well into what they get to, get to do. Um, so that there's just um, a level of enjoyment as well. We don't really want to just go through the motions for the sake of of going through the motions. Um, so I've talked for far too long. Um, 